Hello. Let us study about circular motion in this tutorial. Let us understand the concept of uniform circular motion, centripetal force, centrifugal reaction and centrifugal force. Now let us understand some points which helps us to understand the concept of uniform circular motion. Now an object continues to move in a straight line if the net force acting on it is zero or if the net force acts in a direction of motion. For example, if this is a straight line and if an object is kept on it, this object will continue to move in this direction if the force acting on it is zero or if the force is in this direction. Second point, if the net force acts at an angle to the direction of the motion at any moment, then the object will not continue to move in a line but will change its direction and move in a circular or curved path. For example, if the force is acting in this direction or upwards, if the force were to act at an angle to this object, then the object will object because of the force acting on it at an angle will not continue to move in this path but will take a different path which is a circular path. The motion of the object along the circular path with a constant speed is called uniform circular motion. The best examples of uniform circular motion are earth revolving around the sun and the moon around the earth. The other common examples are the merry-go-round and the joint wheel. We also know that in a circular motion there is a continuous change in the direction of the motion of the object. Now, now also as per Newton's first law, force is equal to mass into acceleration. Now, in the adjacent figure, now there is a force. For example, you can see an object over here. This is an object over here. Now, there is a force acting on the object. Now, this object has got a mass m. Now, if a force is there and if there is a, if there is a, and this object is there, then for sure there should be an acceleration. Now, the acceleration is perpendicular to the actual path. In this case, now if you see that over here, the object is moving, a, you know, the object is moving in a circular path over here. The force is acting in such a way that the object will not move in a straight line. It will not move like this. It will move in a circular path. Okay. Now, because of this, then obviously this, if this is the speed at which the object is moving, then obviously there has to be an acceleration. This acceleration is always perpendicular to the speed. And in this case, the speed is uniform. So it means that the acceleration in this case, in case of circular motion is directed towards the center of the circular path. Now, this acceleration is called as centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration and the force is called as centripetal force. Now, centripetal force is nothing but the force that pulls the object towards the center. Centripetal force as follows. It is defined as the radial force, that is the force that is acting in a radial direction, which is directed towards the center which is acting on a body in a circular motion. The direction of centripetal force is changing. The force is changing continuously so that it always remains radial. Let us consider the example of a stone. You can see a stone is tied to a string and it is whirling around in this direction. The tension in the string provides a centripetal force. Now, in towards the center. Now consider the stone at a position A. For example, the stone is at a position A now. The tension along the string, it pulls the stone towards the center over here. Okay. Now at that instant, the stone is moving in the direction of the tangent. The stone is actually moving in this direction now. Now because of the tension in the string, it is being pulled over here. Now this tangent, let us call it as A, A dash. Now, which is actually perpendicular to this point OA. Now, if the string is snapped out of the hand, that means the centripetal force is withdrawn. You can see the string is snapped out of the hand. The moment it goes out of the hand, there is no centripetal force acting on this. It is absolutely equal to zero. Then in that case, 
as per the newton's first law of motion the body continues to be in a state of motion unless acted upon by force now in this case the object will continue to move in a tangential direction with a velocity equal to v now let us try and understand the meaning of centri fugal reaction now we have already studied that now whenever a object rotates or revolves in a circular path with a constant speed it exhibits a centripetal force which is directed towards the center as per newton's third law there is a reaction for every action if we consider centrifugal centripetal force as an action towards the center then there has to be an equal reaction which will try to pull the object away from the center now this reaction is called as an centrifugal reaction now most of the times it is common to confuse centrifugal reaction with centrifugal force now let us see some illustrations of centripetal force now you might have seen the banking of the railway tracks and roads in when an automobile takes a bend for example the automobile is moving in this direction now when an automobile takes a bend on a level road the centripetal force which is towards the direction towards the center okay is supplied only by the friction of the wheels and the road now this force is very very small so there are chances that the vehicle has to be driven very slowly else it may skid to overcome this difficulty the road bed has to be inclined for example you have seen that the road bed example if the if the level road is like this the road bed is inclined suitably by raising the outer edge of the road this outer edge of the road this entire area is raised now which actually prevents the skidding and the damages to the tires now similarly in case of railway tracks the outer rail in a curve is raised a little higher than the inner one now this prevents the wear and tear of the wheels and the chances of train going off the track similarly we can see that okay a cyclist actually leans towards the curve for example cyclist is bending towards the curve so as to maintain the necessary centripetal force you can see a similar example in case of a uh, racing cars now let us go on to understand the centrifugal force now as we have already seen earlier that there is a centrifugal reaction whenever a centripetal force tries to pull the object towards its center now for example assuming that you are sitting in a vehicle let us go to the same example over here now assuming that you are sitting in a vehicle over here and the vehicle is moving along the curve pretty fast whenever it moves along the curve we feel pushed outwards but actually there is no such mysterious centrifugal force pushing us now what is happening we tend to move in a straight line for example we are sitting over here we tend to move it like this whereas the vehicle is moving like this okay now make to make ourselves go in a curved path now either the seat back over here or the we or the door of the car will exert a force that a centrifugal force cannot be created it is only an experience which is felt in the context of circular motion or rotational motion centrifugal force is due to the inertia of rotational motion and it is a fictitious force now let us go on to understand the applications of centrifugal force now the first the first application of centrifugal force is a centrifugal pump the centrifugal pump this is actually used to transfer large quantities of liquids from low pressure region to high pressure region it may be a high pressure over here it's coming from low pressure over here whenever a fluid enters this particular chamber over here you can see these fans the, the blades of the fans arranged in such a way that it tries to push the water away from the center and it gets into this fluid outlet valve and the water is pushed to the higher region they are also used in blowers and exhaust fans the next one is centrifugal governor now the speed of the engine can be controlled by a device which is called as centrifugal governor which was actually designed by a person called as james watt now the working of this entire device it depends upon the centrifugal force the third example is centrifugal drying machine 
Now this consists of a cylindrical vessel. You can see it over here. The cylindrical vessel over here, which has got some perforated walls along the circumference and can spin rapidly about its axis. This is the axis of the rotation. It can spin rapidly about its axis. You can see the perforated walls over here. Now wet clothes are actually placed in the cylinder and the cylinder is set into rapid rotation. Water is forced out of these pores and the clothes gets dried. The next example of a centrifugal uh, force is in uh, a device called as a centrifuge. Now this basically helps to separate the minute particles of uh, different densities. Now for example, you know, there will be small tubes over here containing the particles of liquid. They are suspended in a circular frame and they are rotated at a very high speed in a horizontal circle. Now in the centrifuge, the particles of higher density they, for example, you can see toward the particles of higher density, they move away to away from the axis, whereas light particles will move towards the axis. Thus, the particles of different densities are separated. The centrifuge is actually of great importance in separating proteins, hormones, viruses from different liquid media. Thank you.